بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سٹوڈنٹس ویلکم ٹو دا تھرڈ سیمسٹر ان جنرل اینڈ ویلکم ٹو ٹیفل ان پرٹیکولر ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹارٹ اے کورس دا کورس نیم از ٹیفل آئی ایم شیور یو آل ہیو ڈن یور فرسٹ ٹو سیمسٹرس اینڈ یو آل ہیو انجوائڈ یور ٹو سیمسٹرس the course you are pursuing the program that you are pursuing it's very important for you people and the course that we are going to start in this semester particularly this course the TEFL the Creed 3 credit R course and the course code you know it's 502 it's a very very practical course very very important course you will see when we proceed this course how important this course is what is the value of this course in your career what is the value of this course for those who are in job and again for those who would seek job after completing this course you might have heard this name TEFL somewhere somebody might have talked about that TEFL or you might have heard this word TOEFL so we will see that how TEFL is different from uh, TOEFL so dear students I hope you are ready for this course I guarantee you you will enjoy this course provided you put efforts provided you work hard provided you do whatever instructions are given to you you all will enjoy this course before I start this course formally I want to give you some instructions for this course since you have done your semester 1 and 2 then I'm sure you all have done it well I'm sure you all have got through okay some of you could not it's okay it happened it is part and parcel of life so people who could not qualify their courses I recommend them I suggest them to work hard give more time to your studies and you will feel you will compensate for the loss if I ask you the question what is your grade in the previous semester what is your uh, GPA or I must say CGPA cumulative what does CGPA stand for Do you know can you answer me cumulative yes grade oh yes cumulative grade point average yes that is what they, this C GPA stand for so this really important students you all have to have good grades mind you once you would complete this course you will go to the market and some organizations will not accept you unless you have good CGPA I hope you have you are putting efforts and you have put efforts and you will be putting efforts but mind you it's an advice in the beginning try to have good grades because now it's a world of competition you have to compete and for this competition my dear students you need to go extra mile you need to work really hard to compete with with your competitors every university is producing masters in English some universities are producing MA English in the morning and the evening programs so you have to compete and mind you you would be at par with all the students wherever you compete you have to compete on merit and if you do well you'll be successful and I'm sure you all will do well and this course which course TEFL yes TEFL this is very important course and if you do this course well I am sure I am certain you will be successful wherever you go so shall we start the course ready for it where's your pen where's your pencil yes when you are for this course you have to have writing material with you yeah you would listen to me that's really important listening is very important at the same time you should have the required things you should have your notebook with you you should have your pen with you and you should be relaxed only then you will 
learn this course only then you will be a good uh, language teacher so let's start do you know the title yes what is the title students teaching of English as a foreign language TEFL and it is TEFL 1 mind you so you will have another TEFL in your fourth semester that will be TEFL 2 we'll call it this is TEFL 1 in the third semester we offer TEFL 1 so who is your resource person for this course particularly I mean who is your teacher who is your professor do you know him yes who is he uh, how does he look like how old is he what are his qualifications which is his first language is he experienced does he speak well yeah these are the old questions you, yes yes fine I mean you should know your resource person you should know your teacher the one who will be teaching you this semester who is your teacher should I tell you no but before I tell you something I want you to tell me something about you I mean introduce yourself mind you we are TEFL students now we are with subject TEFL so we are TEFL students so in TEFL I mean we are going to be future teachers so for that you need to give your introduction in introduction what would you give you your name yes your registration number fine what else your background yes good what else your CGPA oh yes if, if not good it's okay no problem you can compensate for the loss in this term semester and the coming semester I tell you yeah first semester and second semester they are tough semesters because you are moving generally people move from this uh, annual system of examination to semester system of examination so it happens once you move from one system of examination to another you face some problems but slowly and gradually you overcome the problem I mean once you start the semester you feel that this is a better system where where you get good grades where you don't overburden yourself because semester system generally semester system comprises of four months so in four months whatever you uh, whatever your teachers te teach you in the class whatever projects are given to you so you prepare and you take exam and you move to the next semester so in the in the uh, annual system of examination you all have experienced what was there the whole year we wait we work and finally we take exam by the time we we complete that tenure that duration we get exhausted yes yeah it happens but here you are in a better system you are in a better system where you you start your course you take your prelims sessionals you take your midterm exam and after two months you take your final exam and finally you move to the next semester that was just in fact I was I told you about this annual system and semester system so I ask you who is your resource person yes your answer was that uh, you want me to tell you about uh, yes you want me you want my introduction let's hear you you get some questions it's good so here is my brief CV or resume yeah the new term for you CV and resume as well what is CV and what is resume students do you know CV curriculum curriculum vitae or curriculum vitae yes you are right CV and what is resume do you know what is resume again you mean the resume and CV are the same documents yeah you may say that 
you may say that resume is what dear students it is a American version of your profile from this re is a French word re. so in French we call it resume CV is the British format of this document we call it curriculum vitae or curriculum vitae it is very important document once you uh, complete your course the masters and you will apply for jobs so companies organizations would ask for your CV yes really yes yes so do you know how to make a CV you don't know some of you might know because you are in job and you know uh, how to make a CV but mind you if you are expert skilled person then your skills are your CV your strengths are your CV but simple what is CV and uh, resume uh, I would refer to Kitio Locker a famous communicator American business communicator uh, she defines CV as persuasive summary of qualifications a summary persuasive summary of qualification the word you know how to spell persuasive you don't know okay I tell you P U R S U A S I V E persuasive summary of your qualifications which includes what yes your academic background good what else your experience good what else your trainings fine what else your healthy interest yes what else your communication skills yes what else your references yeah good good you know so these are the points that are important for a good CV or resume so I, 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 I hope now you are able to make your CV so whenever you make a CV dear students first you should write your per, I mean your name your personal profile come to your academic background talk about your last degree that you have done or you are pursuing and then you move on to your experience right and then you talk about uh, references you talk about your communication skills you talk about your computer skills you talk about your your other healthy activities so this all makes your CV so here my CV is here I have given you a brief CV my name is Muhammad Niaz Khan and I am assistant professor in English my qualifications are MPhil in linguistics PhD is in progress I'm working on my research and uh, before that I did my MA English and linguistics literature and TEFL and I have also done uh, MBA in HR so this is my a brief about my uh, uh, qualifications so here experience what is experience by the way what we say generally we say he's a very experienced person you know and these days when you read different newspapers you read dawn you read the news or the daily junk different newspapers we read and uh, you see that every organization every every university every college every school requires right needs experienced people so but the point is how to gain experience yeah this is your question yes Ali all right yeah your question is valid because all the companies require experience but they don't tell us how to how to gain experience all right dear students this is your valid observation but the point is that uh, you can uh, justify you can fill in that gap how yes I mean I tell you how if you do your uh, this course this masters in English that you are pursuing now or the other courses that you have done make it more of a training based course like now you are in the university you will take part in different activities you will uh, take part in uh, graded group discussions you will uh, complete your assignments 
and you will uh, take quizzes again you will be in contact with the university you will be in contact with your other uh, colleagues so all these things would definitely uh, give you age that once you would apply for a job and you can tell your tell the employer that well you are I mean an experienced uh, candidate for it you can refer to your event management for example you are pursuing this course and uh, you are in liaison liaison you are in contact with your other fellows there are students with you in the same badge you help them out whenever they need anything you you have group uh, group study combined studies very important so all these things would definitely uh, give you benefit and again another thing yeah yes you can apply for a job you have a big bachelor degree if you feel that you can manage it well with this with this course so you can apply for a job you can have a job somewhere and again that would be studying with the job and I tell you in this world in this competitive world this degree and experience if somebody has is having a job plus he is studying so definitely he will have age over those who are just pursuing their 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 qualifications it doesn't mean that people should should not do it on this ground but those who have this advantage of having a job and I mean their uh, studies so their learning is comparatively more than the others who are the full-time students yeah I agree people who are full-time students they uh, put more efforts in their education and they do well all right so this one of course the word experience that well experiences that when you work somewhere and you gain first-hand knowledge for example you become a teacher somewhere you start teaching in a, a language institute and I tell you this course TEFL would help you that that if you uh, get an opportunity to, to teach somewhere as a spoken English teacher as a, a teacher in a re writing resource uh, center so you can do that this uh, this course would definitely help you and that again you would uh, add that to, to your CV and your CV will be uh, better so experience is very important when you work somewhere and you get the first-hand knowledge of that job so that opens your uh, horizon when you uh, start working somewhere and you start teaching people or you start giving consultancy to people so yes this is uh, really uh, useful for you so you in fact improve yourself with this um, situation so my experience is more than 10, 10 years uh, of course teaching and training with different universities uh, like uh, universities where I taught National University of Modern Languages Khaidi Azam University, Air University, Bahari University all these are uh, the good names or if you see talking about the ranking yes Khaidi Azam is number one Namal is also a very good name Air University and Bahari University these are the universities where I taught at different levels and I tell you that of course I have very uh, before my masters I used to teach in, in some schools as well so I have a teaching experience uh, at school level at uh, college level at university level and I taught almost at all levels I taught class fifth students as well and then I moved on to different levels so these days I teach in a university so here uh, besides teaching in university at times uh, I give time to some organizations in my summer vacation in my free time so these are some companies where I I gave consultancy uh, the staff of these companies I trained now you, you will ask me that which areas I I trained this staff so yes my areas particularly uh, presentation skills particularly report writing skills uh, letter writing memo writing essay writing pressy writing writing skills so all these are uh, the skills which uh, employees need 
and organizations invest in their workforce. So I, in, in fact, uh, at times whenever there is a need, some organizations, they consult me and I help these uh, employees of this organization to grow. So these are some organizations. NEBAF is one name, National Institute of Banking and Finance. So what is NEBAF? Yes, it is a subsidiary of State Bank of Pakistan. NEBAF is a training center of uh, State Bank and what NEBAF does, it uh, provides training to employees of State Bank and also employees of other banks. So NEBAF is a training center and where I, I mean, sometimes I train staff and also uh, in private sector, MCB is a bank over there. Sometimes I, uh, I mean, in my free time, this, this staff college Islamabad, where employees uh, come for, for improving their writing skills, and the staff college contacts me. I mean, maybe uh, once in a uh, in a quarter, to so help those employees out. Then again, there is an institute that is a PMO, again okay, a training institute, where it's a government um, uh, organization. So I also train staff there. STI is a secretariat training institute. At times, I train the staff of the STI. TCC is a multinational company. DCL, again a company. These are the companies where I, uh, I mean, sometimes in my leisure, I go there and uh, help these people improving their writing skills, improving their presentation skills, improving their, their uh, yes, spoken English as well. Some, some organizations, they really want their employees to be fluent in English. So they, they uh, consult people in, in the market, people in the industry. So at times uh, they call me and I, I help them out uh, in their spoken English or other areas. So these are the companies where I uh, work sometimes in my leisure. All right, let's move on. What is it? Objectives of this course. Yes, very, very effective. Now why? The point is, Whenever you start a course, so objectives should be clear in your mind. Which course are you talking about? Cheerful, yes. So what are the ob objectives of this course? So why? First of all, we want you to be good at what? Skills. Which skills? Teaching skills. Right? Because the course is teaching of English as a foreign language. So you need to be good at classroom teaching. Uh, this classroom can be, can be a college classroom, it can be a university classroom, it can be a, a spoken uh, language, spoken English classroom. So wherever the students are there, you, we want you to be, to be good at. We want, uh, we want uh, in fact, we want to help you out so that you can be a good TEFL uh, teacher. Again, to give you knowledge and understanding of the language systems. This course really uh, has been designed to, to update you on what language systems, skills, and the sub-skills. Yes, knowledge system. It's a new term for you. Oh, students, yes. Knowledge systems, yes, language. What is a language, by the way? A tool of communication to express yourself, use language. What language? Yes, what makes language? Oh, yes, symbols. All right, verbals, nonverbal symbols. All right, language is a tool, of course, to express your feelings, to vent your feelings, to convey your message. And we, of course, we are human beings, and of course, we are social. We are living in a society and language plays an important role in this uh, society. So what else? Language systems. What are language systems, by the way? Pragmatics. Yes, of course. Very important language system. Pragmatics. What is pragmatic, students? Use of language. Oh, yes. Pragmatics. Ticks is what science. You know, ticks. Yes, you are. I mean, you have already done a subject linguistics one 
and you might be doing this subject linguistics too. So scientific study of language and one of the system is what? Pragmatics. What is pragmatics? Use of language. How we can use language in different situation. Another system is semantics. What is semantics? Yes, study of meaning of language. Yes, semantics. And again, of course, when you talk about semantics, you might be familiar with uh, connotative meanings of a word and denotative meaning of a word. The terms, you know, I hope you know the terms. Okay, dear students, denotative meaning of a word means dictionary meaning. And connotative meaning of a word is what? The meaning that society gives to a word. So connotative meaning and denotative meaning. So we should know in fact what is the denotative meaning because every word has different shades of meaning. You know, you might be familiar with this word, word family. Every word has this, like you have a family, these words also have family. So semantic is another system of language. Then you have phonetics. Yes, phonetics, text, science of phones. Phonology, phonetics, phonology, pragmatics, semantics, syntax, right? So all these are what? These are systems of what? Language. And the skills? Yeah, all essential skills. Do you know which, which skills are there? Which essential skills are there? Reading, yes, writing, fine, listening, all right, speaking, yes, Ahmed, good, you know all these four skills, yes, these are the four skills, and we call them input and output skills, now what are input skills, yes, they are, can you try, what are input skills, you don't know, okay, yes, Moeed, can you try, what are input skills, you know what, input skills, think for a while, Okay, what happens when you read? Yes, you have a clue. What happens when you listen? Oh, fine, great. So are these input skills? Listening and reading. Very good. All right, good students. So you've got the idea. These are the four skills and two are input skills. Which are input skills, students? Reading and listening. And now the question is, what are output skills? Do you know? What are output skills? Try. Writing. Fine. Or speaking. Very good. Very good. Okay. You got the idea. So dear students, these are the skills. The four skills of language learning. If you want to learn a language, what we do? We learn these four skills. So we are in fact the TEFL stu uh, students. So we need to know what are the skills of a language because we being teachers we have to teach these skills as well and we should know how to teach and in this course you will learn how to teach reading skills, how to teach writing skills. So different activities we will design, we will use different methods and the principles to teach these skills. Mind you we are going to be future language teachers. Teachers, which language? English language. Language, ling international lingua franca. Which language I'm talking about? English, obviously English. So English is an international language. What is international language? Language which is spoken all over the world. And that's why we call it lingua franca. So English is an international language lingua franca. So these are some skills, the input skills and output skills and we will see in the coming lectures how can we uh, teach these skills. So this is another objective that we have. Again, we have to uh, develop what language skills of our student. This is another objective, the development of the language skills in the students. How students would be good writers, good speakers, 
good uh, listeners and good writers. So we being TEFL teacher, we being language teacher, we have to work on that. And also how this, uh, the objective of this course is making the students able to apply different approaches, methods and techniques in teaching language skills. Here I want to make thing, one thing clear that we will focus on teaching more. Our focus will be more on teaching and less on learning. Learning is the other part of course. Because we, the teaching of English as a foreign language. So this is what our focus will be. So dear students, these are what objectives of the course. What is it? Mean to, hold, to have a knowledge and understanding of the language systems, skills and sub-skills of the learner. And then to be good language teacher. To teach this language well. And again to develop language skill of our learners. Now move on. You want to know overview of this course that what areas we will cover in this course in other, in other words I mean you want to know the roadmap important yes it's very important if the roadmap is there you will pursue this course we will pursue this course successfully in fact if, if you don't know the roadmap then you might not I mean you might not be able to know where you have to go. So what is our destination and how will we reach that destination? So dear students, this is what the overview of the course. We'll see what is TEFL. First thing is, what is TEFL? What are the methods of foreign language teaching? See, methods. We will see what are the methods and which book will follow. I'll give you the books as well. Then grammar translation method. Mind you, these are the eight methods. After introducing this course title TEFL, we will move on to the methods of foreign language teaching. Do you have an idea of these methods? No? Okay, maybe, I mean, you have uh, sometimes, you know, you might have been through these, one of these methods in your early life, in your early academic life, in your school life, the college life. But now for the first time you will, you will come to know what is the exact method the teachers use and how do they use this method. So these are the methods. The first one is we call it um, the trauma translation method. Then you have direct method and then audio lingual method. Uh, what is audio lingual method? Audio lingual method. What is it? That language is acquired through imitation, repetition, and reinforcement. We also call it army method. Right? So, this uh, audio lingual method is also termed as army method because this method focuses on what? On repetition, on imitation on reinforcement. Then there is another method, silent way. Yeah? You would say, what is silent way? How can we teach this language through silent way? Don't you know? Uh, yes, you might have an idea. This word mime, M-I-M-E. What is mime? Do you know? You, yes, when I utter this word mime, immediately I, I'm sure you might have struck in your uh, uh, you see, uh, Mr. Beans. Okay, all right. Mime. So, dear students, mime is what when you act uh, and you convey your message. You don't say anything. You remain silent, and through your actions, you convey your message. And yes, it is uh, one of the successful methods of language teaching. And once uh, an actor acts and the student has to give running a running commentary on that so yes there is a, l a learning he has to think he has to think of vocabulary items he have to he has to think of expressions and finally he has to communicate so silent way is another method of foreign language teaching 
Then you have another method, Suggestopedia. Yes, it's also another method, very important one. Method says that students have capability to learn. We, we, sh we should help students in their, in their learning approach and we should give confidence to our students. And this method talks about ideal environment. Suggestopedia provides uh, excellent sitting facility, excellent classroom facilities. And again, this method talks about uh, importance of learning and this method also s says that every learner intends to learn so like again it might uh, be linked with theory X and theory Y you know what is theory X and theory Y yes maybe in in management it is one of the motivational theories theory X is what does it say X cross this theory says that human beings don't want to learn because they're cross right theory why yes this theory says everybody wants to learn so we should uh, treat human beings accordingly the first approach is that they this theory says that human beings don't want to learn so that is theory X and theory Y says everybody intends to learn so suggestopedia suggests that well we, we need to provide ideal learning environment to, to our learners and we should uh, anticipate we should expect that learners have capability to learn and they will learn then another method is there that is C L L what is it community language learning a very important method that once you there is a community and then you learn language in a community then you have total physical response method another method of foreign language learning another approach is the communicative approach and these are the eight methods of foreign foreign language learning uh, we will talk about these methods in the coming lectures these are the methods of foreign language learning at the moment you should know what are these methods so first one is GTM that is grammar translation method then you have what direct method you have grammar translation method you have audio lingual method you have silent way you have suggestopedia so on and so forth these are some methods are there so there are some important questions I'll give you these questions because at the end of every method these questions are to be asked so these questions I'll give you in the coming lectures Again, we'll move on to exploring skills. As I've already told you, dear students, that the job of a language teacher is to teach skills because we discussed that language is learned through input skills and through output skills. We need to improve our listening skill. We need to work on our speaking skills. We need to improve on our writing skills. So these four skills are to be improved. Again, you may have a question. Why these four skills? Dear students, well, it's a natural way. You know, a child, how does child acquire language? Have you ever seen? Yeah, you must have seen your brothers, your siblings, or your nephew, your nephews, your nieces. How do these people acquire language? Well, a child, you see, what does he do? Listens. Listen to whom? Siblings yes friends fine so listening is what a natural way and even the research says that before birth a child starts acquiring language and even before a birth a child can distinguish between hard sound and the soft sounds so this is a natural way of learning uh, acquiring language mind you there are some researchers they say that language one the first language is always acquired and language two is we learn L2 or language two whereas we acquire language one so this is uh, a theorist view, view a viewpoint that word acquisition is for language one and learning is for language two so listening is one 
that a child listens and then child tries to say something, speaks. So again, there are different stages of this uh, speaking, the one word stage and two word stage and find of course a complete sentence and before that the vowel sound, the consonant sounds. So again, in this way the child uh, speaks. And then of course after that he starts reading, he recognizes letter, right? And after reading the students, what he does? Yeah, he practice writing. So that's why we need to, uh, being a TEFL student, being TEFL uh, uh, student of this course, we, we need to explore these skills and particularly with this context that how we can, we can uh, communicate, how we can teach these skills to our students because we have to produce good language learners and this is our job being a uh, teacher we have to work our, we have to work really hard to produce good teachers so again then what is the methodology and these four skills we'll talk about then again uh, we'll move on what is uh, exploring language also we'll see pronunciation how to teach pronunciation vocabulary grammar and discourse analysis and then we'll move on in this course sporting learning process again it's very important how can you help our students in learning process in this way we'll talk about CBI CBI what is it content based instruction again it is one of the method particularly for ESP teaching what is ESP English for specific purposes yes business English these are the sub branches of ESP so content based instruction is a theory in fact that focuses on the content the language and content then we have another sporting uh, the process is course books are there Cal what is Cal students you don't you didn't you know it Cal C for computer okay computer assisted language learning computer assisted language learning learning styles and then strategies also uh, and again what else learners autonomy the learner learner needs to be autonomous and again the classroom based assessments so these are what the sporting the learning process here yes, students this was all overview of the course any questions yes Moeed do you have a do you have a question no question Ali yes do you have a question yes what do you want to say books all right good question very relevant question you want to know the books uh, yes because you know I mean since we have to pass our exam we have to take our exam so books are important so it's, it's a very relevant the question okay hold on I'll give you the books they're very important in fact I'll give you the books uh, the name of these books and then of course we will follow these books in this uh, course as well so these are some books for EFL 1 and EFL 2 the first three books with red color you can see them that these are uh, books that we will be using in this semester particularly in EFL 1 techniques and principles in language teaching by Diane Larson Freeman second book is practical English language teaching by David Noonan third one is a course in English teaching practice and theory by Penny Ewer these are the three books which are uh, which we'll be using in this semester particularly other books are there that in the next semester we will uh, use them techniques and teaching vocabulary by Virginia French grammar practice activities testing for language language learner and their errors mistakes and correction by Julian and introduction to discourse analysis by Malcolm these are some books that we'll be using these books are available in the market and also the handbook that your university will provide you will also be uh, a useful help for, for you people but these books particularly the first one we will start with the first one all the methods that I have just talked about 
Uh, the first book talks about these methods. And very important, uh, the, the good point is that Larson talks about these eight methods in a very, very systematic way. And once you go through these, uh, the methods from this book, you will listen to lectures. Things would be easy for you to, to understand, to grasp. So there is, are some books are there that would help you. How will we proceed this course? It's very uh, uh, important question. You will be thinking of this question that how we'll move on. What I expect from you, discussions. Discussions, yeah. Are you shy, hesitant, reluctant? No, you need not to be. Because this is a course which needs a lot of interaction. So once you come for the class, you need to do what? Be active, right? So you need to participate. Whenever I ask a question, you need to answer. So I'll be asking you questions. So you can't doze off. So be ready, be active. Wait for a question and try to answer. So discuss, interact with me. When I raise a question, I want quick reply. And you need to reply to me. Again, yes discussion would be there of course that is part of evaluation you will be uh, discussing on that uh, topic participation I've already mentioned yet you need to participate with me in fact you need to answer my questions it would be two-way process mind you it should not be one-way traffic we are language teachers so we have to interact with our students so we'll practice here Fine? I hope you understand. Yes, good, that's good. Again, observation. I want you to observe. I want you to visit different schools. I want you to visit different colleges, different institutions where language is being taught. So that observation will help you. Observation will, will tell you how language is being taught and what else can be done. Because now you are TEFL's student. You will know these methods. And then you will be able to criticize. You will be able to improve the system. If you are teaching English, if you are teaching in a language center, or if you are teaching in, a, in an institution, in a company, so your teaching will definitely improve. So my dear students, this is the objective that we have to achieve. That at the end of this two semesters, TEFL 1 and TEFL 2, you should be able to teach this language well. You should be able to help learners to achieve their goals. And this is not impossible for you. You all can do that. You have potential. You have opted for this course. Believe me. And I, I'm sure, I'm certain that you have capability to be a good teacher. And you can. Just give me time. Listen to lectures, read the handouts, observe classes. Then if you, if you can get a job, get a job and start exploiting these activities. And I tell you, you will be a successful person. You have potential. Girls, yes, you can be very good language instructors. Boys, yes, you can be excellent language instructors, language teachers, of course. And again, I mean, if you are good at this language, it would help you in different exams. You can take your comparative exam. You can take your CSS exam. So this good language skills would definitely help you in your, in your exams, in your comparative exam, and you can explore the world. This is what I want from you students. Attention is also important. When you listen to the lecture, when you I mean, sit for the lecture, please pay attention and put everything aside. And implement the skills, whatever we learn, implement those things. It's very important. Now, students, this is all that what I expect from you. Today, if you move on to first, what is TEFL? We have been discussing this for the last one hour. Now, I have every right to ask you a question. What is TEFL? Yeah, do you know what is TEFL's 
You don't know? Okay. You want to have water? No, you can't go now. Wait, wait. All right. So, TEFL. Teaching of English as a foreign language. Or, what is it? Teaching English as a foreign language? Yes. So, TEFL is an acronym. It is not an abbreviation. What is it? It is an acronym. Means what? Stands for teaching language as a foreign language. So that's what. Now I, I hope there won't be any doubt that what does TEFL stand for? And what is it? It is an acronym. And again, some people say that they are generally referred to the world of teaching, where students are not native speakers of language. And the teachers may be native or may not be speakers of language. Like, for example, in Pakistan, a lot of teachers are there. They teach English and they are not native speakers of language. They have learned this skill. They have done their masters. They have learned their PhD. They have done their TEFL. So they have become language teachers. And yes, there are some universities where the teachers are the native speakers. Like at Namal, uh, actually, the National University of Modern Languages, there are some teachers from, from France, from Germany, from China. They teach these lang respective languages in the different departments. French teacher, they teach French. And it is not hard and fast that they have a degree in French. But why are they teaching? Because they are, they, are, they are the native speakers. And similarly, Chinese or other, because it is their na native language, and they can teach. So this is what, I mean, this, the word TEFL, that how can we link it with, with the teaching. And again, TEFL refers to teaching of English, so not learning, because we are preparing you to be, to be a good teacher. So this is our objective. Learner side, of course, definitely when you teach, you learn. It is said, a teacher learns more than students do in fact so you learn and you teach and you learn and this learning process goes on but our focus would be on what how to teach and how to teach this subject well how to teach it with with all the available resources so that is what mean uh, TEFL refers to it and then again that how how to teach and where to teach this is our objective is that teaching this language, what, which level do you teach? And again, where do you teach? At, in a university, in a language center, in a college? Do you teach to, at kindergarten or at grade 10 level? What, which level do you teach in fact? So again, it varies that, that whom do you teach? Who are the learners? Do you teach to staff of a hotel? Do you teach English to, to drivers of a multinational company? Do you teach uh, language to, to staff of a, a, a cement factory? So again, where do you teach? It's also important, how do you Again, every situation demands a different method, different handling of the situation. So that's why when you teach, you need to keep in mind where you are teaching, who are your learners, and what is their educational level, their background. So these things are very important that you have to teach. Yes, some language teachers are indigenous teachers, right? This is one, for example, if you teach English, so yes, you have learned this English, right? It is language two for you, language one is your Sharaiki or Punjabi, Pashto, whatever. Like, this is language too for you. You have learned it and you are learning it as a foreign language and then you will become a teacher. In Pakistan, of course, a lot of te teachers are there. They have d d done their masters, MPhil and PhDs in English and they have been teaching English, of course. Indigenously, they are indigenous teachers, in fact. So they worked hard, they put efforts and they have become Teachers. And again, some Pakistani teachers, of course, they are teaching abroad as well. They are, they are teaching in Saudi Arabia and all that. So this is what means all is TEFL, teaching of English as a foreign language. And then, okay, if I ask you a question, how many of you 
want to be teachers of English. How many of you want to make your career with this, with this course? Yes, I can see some hands. Good, good. So most of you intend to make your career with this course. It's very important. I tell you, yes, you can make. You can, you can. This can be a launching pad for you. The course you have opted, but you have to do it well. Believe me, of course, mean good English language teachers, good English language instructors. They are doing very good job, and they are well placed. They have very good projects. They are working on, but. For that, you need to be a good language teacher. You need to be a good English language teacher. There are opportunities. There are opportunities all over the world. There are opportunities in the Middle East. There are opportunities in the country. But for that, you have to go an extra mile. You have to work hard. Yes, give due time to all subjects. But I want more time. I want more practice. You need to practice these skills. Again now, from today onwards, I want you to do what? Yes, start communicating in English. Start speaking in English. And you will see the change. Start reading, start speaking, start writing, start listening. All four skills. And you will see the change. So dear students, got it? Clear? Okay, move on. So, I tell you the scope of this subject. What is scope of TEFL? Yes, of course, private schools. A lot of private schools are there in our country. Some are very good schools and they pay well, in fact. But again, the requirement is that the person should be proficient in English. The person should be, should be good at speaking. So you need, to, you need to improve your speaking skills. You need to improve your listening skills. And how? We'll see how. By listening, simple. Listen to documentaries. Listen to natives, listen to your teachers, so listening is important. Similarly speaking, speak more, practice speaking. So if you are good at input and output skills, there are opportunities in schools. Again, corporate training departments. There are so many training uh, institutes which require good language teachers. You know, it's, it's international language. It is the need of every organization. So, what you, you can, but for that, you have to have something. You have to be proficient in, this, in these skills. If you, if you want to be in the corporate world, yes, organizations require good language teachers and they pay you very well. Again, at kindergarten level, good language teachers are in demand. Universities, yes, of course. And I tell you, these days, not only in the Department of English, in almost every department, they require English language teachers, business, of course, every university is offering business programs. So you have at BBA level, at master's level, there is a need of ESP teachers, the need of good English language teachers in computer sciences. Yes, there is a need of these teachers, technical writers, uh, in fact, uh, good, uh, I mean, uh, spoken uh, English teachers. So all at different levels, technical writers are required, good report writers are required. So English, I mean, people who have, have done their masters in this field, they are eligible for these jobs. So universities also welcome you, companies also welcome you, banks also wel welcome you, in fact. Again, some government-sponsored projects are there. You can be part of that. If you are good at TEFL, again, you can give uh, private freelance teaching. Online teaching is also available. You can teach to people in Saudi Arabia. Online teaching. To Skype, you can teach if you are a good teacher, if you are good at TEFL. And then again, summer camps, some, you can have some projects. People really, of course, those who are good at, they don't have time. O organization remain in contact with them and they, they kept on calling them for the betterment of their staff. So there is huge scope for this TEFL. But again, I would say that if you are a good artist, and how to be good at? Yes, you need to put efforts. These two semesters, you have to work really hard, really hard, if you want to be an efficient language teacher. And if you want to make your career in this 
discipline particularly of course and again because since you will learn how to read write listen and speak so writing skills definitely would help you in your other exams like competitive examinations so this one is what we call it that is scope of TEFL so students well here if you move on a bit that who is an EFL teacher so there are two categories of this EFL teachers one indigenous teachers who are those right I mean people who have learned this language as L2 language 2 and they are teaching this language and again second category is of course native speakers of language who are these for example they have this English as their language one and they teach to native speakers or to non-native speakers these are what I mean two categories of EFL is there in fact there are some acronyms that you should know would help you in and once you know these acronyms the confusion may be uh, removed well students so now in fact we are going to wind up this first lecture we will continue in the le next lecture about some acronyms so let me summarize whatever we have covered today in the first lecture we started with what is TAFO then I gave you my profile then I ask you for your profile you give me profile then what I did that I gave you the overview of the course I gave you the books name that we will be uh, using in this uh, the course three uh, three criteria course and then what else is that uh, what I expect from you and how can we improve the four skills of language reading writing and listening and then we talked about uh, scope of TEFL that how we can make our career in this subject and then we discussed that who is in TEFL a teacher uh, people who have done it as their first language or their second language so in the next lecture we'll, we'll move on with, with this the topic we'll start methods of TEFL in fact after finishing these acronyms that are important and they are linked with TEFL so with this thank you very much see you in the next class